Welcome to Find Your Lady Tribe. Brenda. Yes. What is the definition of insanity? <laughs> oh, you know what it is. I it know. is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that. Come okay. All right. Come on back. <laughs> Welcome to Find Your Lady Tribe. I am your host, Brenda Ridgely, author, speaker, and midlife women's coach. This season is dedicated to your midlife mindset, so be sure to subscribe now to be notified of a new episode each week. I am honored to be joined this season by co-host Tressa Bryant of Love and Life Coaching. She is a mindset, trauma, and relationship expert. Join our inner circle to be the first to know about retreats, workshops, events, and receive tribe building tips. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash find your lady tribe to join. Are you ready? Let's go. So speaking of doing something over and over again, <laughs> I, it's so funny. This is a story I told, I put out on Facebook one day, like, I wish I were a morning person. I, I just can't get up early. I'm, I'm not a morning person. I'm cra crabby and blah, blah, blah. How do you become a morning person? And overwhelming, <laughs> the, the response was, go to bed earlier. <laughs> That's a pattern I can't seem to <laughs> change. Right? Well, it's so funny. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about patterns because, oh my gosh, we've all got them, right? We've all got these patterns. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're driving the same roads. Like how many times have you ever needed to go mm -hmm. somewhere else? Say for instance, your kids are out of school for the season and you just happen to drive to the school the following day because that's what you've been doing for the last several months. Have I you ever have, done that? I've done that. I've passed where I needed to turn so many times <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, it's the worst when you're on the highway. I'm like, and you missed your exit. That's just yeah. like, oh, are, are you kidding me? Yeah. You're, you're literally, your body is in charge of you at that point. Mm -hmm. You're not really um, choosing your thoughts at that moment, right? You're not really consciously creating in the moment. You're just mm -hmm. repeating something and over and over and over again that you've done autopilot. before. You're totally on autopilot. Okay, so let's talk about that for just a, just a minute because yeah. we have things that we have memories and emotions about, right? And those created feelings and those, cre those kind of sit within us. And... When we have these past emotions and we're bringing them into the present moment, or we have a past memory or maybe a traumatic experience that we didn't process, got stuck in our system, we bring it to the here and now. Yeah. Okay? So what are you doing? Are you processing from the here and now moment or are you having a remembrance of what happened and are you bracing yourself and adjusting based on what you already know and experienced? Yeah, you're kind of expecting something to happen, and what we expect, a lot of times, we create. Exactly, because you're thinking it's going to be something near to what happened in the previous because it's already known to you. Right. Okay? So I love this information so much, and I've been doing a lot of studying recently with uh, Michael Singer and Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. And really what we're talking about is we're talking about getting present in the moment and changing these patterns. If we want something new to happen, we've got to actually think about what it is that we want and then decide what patterns have we re been repeating over and over again that don't serve the things that we want. Right. What okay? we're willing to give up to get exactly. there or <clears throat> take on. Well, you know what? Sometimes... Things? We don't even know we want to give it up because it's become so automatic. We don't even think about whether it's something we desire or don't desire. Right. So that's why I love to bring us back around to sit down with your journal for a couple of minutes, you guys, and write out what is it that you desire? What is it that you want? Um, you know, we design everything else. And I know I've said this before, but we, you know, we design this beautiful patio that we're sitting mm -hmm. on. It looks lovely. It's gorgeous. The fountain is here. Uh, we design our clothes that we wear each day. Mm -hmm. Like we pick out something. We maybe put a couple pieces of jewelry with that. Um, I designed my tattoos or I took thought and time and put a process mm -hmm. into those things to design them. Mm -hmm. So when you're, um, when you're, when you're thinking about things, you have um, <clears throat> thoughts that come up 
because you actually chose them. You're like, I am going to think about this recipe when I'm cooking in the kitchen, right? I'm going to think about that. What is the list that I need to do? What do I think? There's another way that you think about things. Mm -hmm. Another way you can think about them is visualization. Okay. So that's like the second way that you can think about them. Right. And visualization means that, okay, so I'm taking a vacation coming up this next week. And I'll tell you, I have been trying to think about the things that I would like to do when I'm on a vacation. Right. So I'm visualizing what those would be look like. Pre-paving the way. Exactly. I've yeah. never snorkeled before. Ooh. So I, I'm going to do it. I have never <laughs> done that. I'm going into the unknown, but I'm thinking about what that looks like in my mind. I've never thought about snorkeling before. Never thought about the fish. So it's taking me into the unknown. There's a third way that we process thoughts, and that is automatic. Mm. It is the stuff that's running and running and running. Have you ever had a day where your thoughts ran away with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Those, I mean, what I would call the ego thoughts, <laughs> right? The ones that woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, that, you know, you're not good enough. Those, yes. Yeah, those, okay. don't, that, those are not good days. All right, so what's <laughs> happening there when we go into that woulda, coulda, shoulda, or the ego thoughts, as Brenda likes to call them, the past memories and those types of things, what's happening to us is that when something happened to us previously that we didn't really enjoy, our brains is to keep us in survivorship, right? We're supposed mm -hmm. to be surviving. So its job is to figure out how we could have done that better and survived it a little bit better mm -hmm. or done a little better. So it's constantly trying to process those and let them move through us and come up with something. But you know what? It keeps you stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let mm -hmm. me ask you this. When you get up in the morning, do you have to think about going to the bathroom or brushing your teeth in the morning? Do you have to like really give it serious thought? Not usually. No. No, automatically, there you go. You're going, right? Right. When you want a glass of water, you really don't give it a lot of conscious thought and go, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up from my chair. I'm going to walk over to the counter or wherever I keep my glass or the cupboard. I'm going to mm -hmm. pick up my glass. And then from there, once I picked up my glass, I'm going to walk over to the refrigerator and I think today I'll choose that I'm going to have ice like I do every single other day. Maybe a little squeeze of lemon. Maybe a squeeze of lemon. Okay, so you get the point. You mm -hmm. probably don't even think about any of that. You just do automatically it. are on autopilot, and your body has become the boss of you, and now you're just going. Before you know it, you got a glass of water with ice and a lemon in it, and you don't even really know how you got there because you were thinking about 40 other thoughts while you did that. Yeah. Can you relate? I can relate. I have happened several times a day, I'm sure. Okay. Minute? <laughs> An so hour? We, so we get into new situations in life. Yeah. All right. We get into new situations. Maybe we want to have a new relationship. Mm. Okay. Maybe we want to try something new like um, Brenda, when you wrote your first book and you became an author, had you been writing for years? No, I had not. Was it new to you? It was all new. Okay. Did you have a pattern of writing each day when you decided you were going to write a book? Was that already there? No, absolutely not. I actually feel that, I mean, I would make a decision that when I would go and I would take myself to the chair and I would kind of look at what I might want to write about. And I felt like it just, it just came through me. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You opened up space for your mind and your body and your soul, the you that's in there, to experience something new. It was exciting and awesome. Well, the unknown. It was incredible, yes. So when you do the known repeatedly day in and day out, does that feel as exciting? No, that's when you get into that humdrum, what's it all about? Yep. You know. Even if you go to the gym. Okay, so I go to the gym. And if I don't switch up my workout, right, if I don't switch it up, say I'm doing legs one day, I'm doing arms the next day, I'm going to do my back or shoulder. If I were not switching that up, if I went to the gym and I did the same exact thing every, every single day, that routine would maybe not make me so excited to go to the gym. No, and your body gets used to it and it doesn't, you don't get the results either. Exactly. I also would not, you know see different parts of my body mm -hmm. experiencing muscle growth and maybe flexibility or cardio or okay if I never run I'm never going to experience that in my body so 
we have to change things up. We get into these patterns where we're just like, okay, we're like these little robots and we go. Um, I want to tell you something. One of the things that I think that we do often is that we project onto other people because oh, yeah. instead of looking internally, we go, you know, I kind of really wish so-and-so would change their patterns so that I can be happy because I'm not really digging their patterns right yeah, now. Like make my life easier if. It, exactly. If yeah. you would just do blah, blah, blah a little differently, Brenda, mm -hmm. then I could move forward with whatever the blah, blah, blah yeah, is. You're I, yeah, you're holding me up. Yeah, you're holding me up. Or, or how about this? Okay, you get a person that's in the same pattern every single day mm -hmm. as you're driving to your place of employment or your business or your, you know, networking business or whatever you're doing. And the same person gets in front of you because they pull out of your neighborhood and they're just driving like this. And you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, I've seen this person 10 times. I see this guy every mm -hmm. single day. If I see him every Wednesday when I go to the shop and now I'm behind him again, he's in a pattern. Yeah. He's in a pattern. He doesn't even remember where he's turning because his car will automatically go there. You've got to navigate. You're not going to expect this guy to go any differently, right? One of the examples that I heard of the other day is that if you want to eat healthier, Brenda, do you get mad at the food when it doesn't make you feel good? <laughs> no, well, yeah. <laughs> Damn those nachos, you know? So, yeah, no. I, get, I get mad at myself. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're in these programs. So one of the other things that comes up for me, um, you know, you are a friendship expert, okay? So let me ask you a question. Do people get in patterns in their friendships? Well, absolutely. You take things for granted. Oh, you don't okay. show appreciation. Oh. Um, simple kindnesses like uh, hugs and uh, looking people in the eye when you speak to them, being on your device when you're sitting with them, when you, with your special time together, those are all what are, things. What are you talking about? That... <laughs> When you get a little comfortable in a relationship, which the comfort is great to, to be comfortable with someone enough so that you are really living side by side. Yes. But when the respects, the little, just, you know, just respect of, the, of valuing the togetherness. Sure. Fades. Right. Uh, you you got to keep that fresh. It could mean that you're stuck in a pattern. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, oh, I see so-and-so every Thursday night. We do the same thing. We go to the da 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 Whatever that looks like. So I think that's why people love talking so much to each other and with each other. Like if, uh, you know, a lot of the time when I go and I walk and talk with someone, so much comes out that you're able to express when you're mm -hmm. walking and talking because mm -hmm. you kind of get out of that pattern. You're in a different mode. Mm -hmm. So we do this in our friendships. We do this when we choose a new partner. I'm dating right now. So if you, you know, <clears throat> maybe you're trying to cho choose a new relationship in your life. And maybe you look back and you go, okay, I'm just going to use this as an example. What were the ways that I used to choose a partner the last time that I chose a partner? Okay. And when I met my partner last time, my last relationship, there were some key things that that person was doing in their life that I said, okay, to in order to have what I wanted out of the relationship. Okay. Now, can you give me an example? Well, okay. So I would ignore red flags. Say for instance, if someone had feelings of anger, being a person that grew up in a household where there was a lot of trauma, I became a people pleaser. And that kind of turns you into a chameleon where if you feel some anger from someone, you change who you are and how you are in the moment in order to please them mm -hmm. so that you don't disrupt and so that anger doesn't come out of that person. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is like a pretty serious example that we're using, right? Yeah. So what do I do? Do I recognize in a new relationship now, if I'm going forward and I'm trying to do something different now and you see people all the time, Brenda, you're just like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing, I'm doing it again. I got the same guy. I got the same girl. I got the same person. I got the same partner. And I really, it's so-and-so's fault. No, it's actually not because you're not paying attention to your patterns, okay? You look at the person or you look at the situation, you go, oh my gosh, there's a red flag here. My past pattern would have been to ignore it in order to get something, which would be 
maybe admiration, maybe time, maybe whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe a physical connection that you have with this person and you're willing to put some things aside that you see in the beginning because you trust your gut and you trust your intuition. You know what's going on. So you put it aside and then that's your pattern. Putting it aside is your pattern. Okay. okay. Now the person's going forward and doing it and you're spending more and more time deflecting, not paying any attention to, not saying how it makes you feel, whatever it is. Now you're smoothing over. That's a pattern. Mm -hmm. That's a total pattern. And it yeah. can happen in friendships. It can happen in dating. It can happen in marriages, partnerships. Being a peacekeeper between two people. It could be It could be that you're the peacekeeper between you and your children. Yeah. I mean, seriously, um, there are volatile relationships in parent-child relationships, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So notice what's going on is that a lot of the time what we want to do if we're used to being a people pleaser or whatever else it is maybe you're dimming your light maybe you're doing something like that and that's a pattern right where you get smaller so that someone else can shine because you were told to not outshine everybody okay right what you want to do is sit down and we're going to kind of circle back around here we're going to say Sit down, get that journal out, you guys, okay? We're going to lighten it up a little bit more. We're going to say, what makes me feel really, really good? You know, what do I want going forward? Take whatever the thing is, is that you're trying to do in the unknown so that you can create something new for yourself and go, okay, well, what does a person in this unknown space do? Maybe I want to become a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Do I sit and do the same job that I do every single day and expect to become a real estate agent? I know that sounds silly, but seriously, people, this is how mm -hmm. simple it is. Mm -hmm. You don't go and do the same pattern. You're actually going to take 30 minutes of that day to study for the real estate test or st study 30 minutes a day for the new program. Yeah. That's the unknown that we're talking about. Yep. So what does that take? You go and you look ahead and you go, okay, well, what does a person with the identity of a healthy relationship have? What does a person with a healthy food habits do? Yeah. How do they react? How do they respond? How yeah. are they? How do they show up in their life? What do they wear? What places do they go to? What people do they talk to? And, and it, then... And if you're someone who's been dimming your light, how do I be like the person who's shining all the time? Exactly. Maybe you find somebody who you admire who behaves that way in their mm -hmm. life and they say, you know what? I'm really wanting to come out of my shell a little bit. Do you think it would be okay... If I interviewed you, mm -hmm. people love to talk about themselves. They yeah. will, they will say, yes, find somebody. I'll say yes. Brenda will say yes. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that sit down. The first key thing is to define what you want. Yes. Because you're the most important part. You're the most important part. So define what it is that you want. What do you, yeah. you well, I want to say also say? that. Contrary to what you may have been told as a child, you are the center of your own universe. Yes, you are. And it's okay to shine and it's okay to uh, take care of yourself and take care of your own needs and, and find the thing that you really want to do. Absolutely. Instead of what everybody else thinks you should do. Right. And I think a lot of people fall into those patterns of doing what everybody else wants them to do. Here's the thing. It's all about patterns. Yeah. Like what you just mentioned, that's all about yeah. our patterns. So. Here's the thing. Figure out what you want to do, and that could just be one thing. It doesn't have to be 10 things. doesn't have to be 20. But when you start asking, you start figuring those out and writing that out. But then look and see, what are my patterns? What are my patterns that I follow every single day? Okay, we even talked about something earlier today when we were talking. Uh, think about this. It could be something as small as using a different foot. Okay, so I have a flight of stairs that I go up every single day, Brenda. In fact, I have two flights of stairs that I go up a couple of times a day. And what I notice is that I step forward with my right leg every single time. When I started like looking at this, I'm like, uh -huh. oh, what are my patterns? <laughs> right down to the smallest thing, okay? Well, now I switch it out. I, I stop and I go up the stairs and I go, okay, today I'm going oh, to use my left leg. You will actually physically feel that change mm -hmm. in your brain because you're using a whole new part of your brain. Right? Yeah. Maybe you don't have to think about going in and brushing your teeth, but maybe today you're going to brush your teeth with a different hand. Right? So maybe you're going to put your makeup on on the left side of your face when you normally might start on the right. When we travel, we try to intentionally switch 
bedsides. Do you have I one on the other it. side of the bed because it's you don't want to like, I mean, you kind of like your side of the bed at home, but at least when you're traveling and going somewhere else, which is my side? Okay, just let's switch. Change it up. Just change it up and see what happens. Yeah. Drive to the grocery store another way, and you're going to see literally something else in your neighborhood that's getting built that you didn't know about. Yeah. You're going to see another school going up. I don't know what it's going to be, but change the patterns and start small. Start noticing what are your patterns. Do you choose people that are financially irresponsible in your relationships? And you're willing to put that aside because, man, they're really, really fun, and they're charging everything on their credit card for these wonderful dates. Or are you doing that? Are you doing that? And Right? Yeah, we have to just Okay, but that's your pattern. That. Mm-hmm. That's your pattern to choose the person that's doing your <coughs> write down what your patterns are and how can you adopt something new that serves the unknown part of you. So here's what's happening when you're embracing the unknown. Now what you're doing is you are no longer going to repeat the same thing over and over again and expect a new result. Now you're going to create a new reality, okay? I have somewhere that I would like to move, all right? What does that take? That takes for me to do some research on the place that I want to move. However, I've taken it a level deeper. Remember we talked about the three ways that our mind can have thoughts, right? So I'm thinking a conscious thought to think about the town that I want to live in. Mm -hmm. And not only that, Brenda, I take it a step further And now I'm visualizing the town that I want to live in. And I went so far as to go and visit the town that I want to live in so that I could have all of this visual memory. I created a new memory around that town. Awesome. I can physically feel myself when I'm thinking about it, walking around the town square and seeing some of the art was there, some of the restaurants that we went to. We visited the beach while I was there. I can literally physically take myself back. And when I have a hard time, maybe some of you have a hard time visualizing, I can go back and visit my photo album and literally take myself to that new place. Okay, so if I come home from the new place and I start doing the same thing over and over again, am I actually going to get to move to the place? No, I'm not. What do I need to do next? Now I need to start making a plan and start looking and feeling like I'm already there. Yeah. And then your body will follow. It'll start following. So every day when I get up today and I walk out of my house, I go, ooh, I love living in such and such place. And I pretend like I'm already there. (laughs) Now what I'm doing is I'm training my body to already live there. Yeah, and can, to it's take like vision physical board 2.0. Seriously. I mean, like you've all had you no know, vision boards where you put maybe photographs of things you want and places you want to go and all that yes. good stuff. But actually taking the next step, maybe going to drive that car. Exactly. Maybe, maybe going to visit that place and walk on, exactly. in the ocean and, and then recall those memories and make try to... A hundred percent reality. A hundred percent because now. now they're in, they're becoming, now the, the future self is becoming my known self mm. instead of my past and everything I've been doing every single day. Isn't that exciting to think you can do that and you can? It really is. And so I drive around with a big old grin on my face right now, knowing that this is up and coming for myself. Mm-hmm. So... I would just say that there is so much to this. We could go on and on about it. We're coming to the near end of our time. If anyone wants to know a little bit more about this, get in touch with me because I would yeah. love to dive deeper into this. Um, Joe Dispenza is a wonderful resource, and so is Michael Singer. Um, and Brenda, maybe you can put those. I love uh, his book, Becoming Supernatural. Joe Dispenza's book, Becoming Incredible. Supernatural, is exactly what I'm talking about. And he has some fantastic meditations. Yeah. What we're also doing is we're creating a connection between your heart center and your brain. Because we overthink things all the time. Yes. And that's also where these memories come up. But the heart knows what you truly want. And so you can mm-hmm. drop back down and start creating from a soul-centered place on the on the things that you really love, you know. I'm going to be 55 years old coming up here pretty soon. And I want to be pretty much happy and ecstatic about all the rest of the days of my life, Brenda. And that's my plan. Yeah. And so I have to go into some unknown areas, figure out what my patterns are. When I go into something unknown, I'm going to look and see if some of those patterns are following me into the unknown. 
And they'll try. And they, oh my gosh, they will because we've just done it and done it. And if they do and they don't serve me, I'm going to choose a new pattern and let go of the old. Thank it for serving me yeah. for so many years and let it go. Yeah, don't dwell on it. Do just not let, dwell. Just nope. Don't it hold go. it. Don't resist it. Just go, you know, you've been pretty awesome. Thanks so much. See you. <laughs> now what are we creating? We're turning towards the new. So right. thank you guys for allowing me to share that. I, I think it's it. excellent stuff. I mean, all we want to do is just become better and create our best lives. And we have so much ahead. Absolutely. So much. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so when three, three or, or more, more gather, gather we, we are, are tribe. tribe.